We're here with James Hall at Ballymore where you've trained uh, for over a decade of your lifetime. You're making a switch to administration, You're coming onto the Queensland Rugby Union board, uh, a role you've experienced before, but what's your motivation to jump into board life? Oh yeah, look, very excited to be able to join the, the QRU board. Obviously, I think a big part for me is wanting to give back and help out where I can and where I can feel I add value. And, you know, the game's given me so much, particularly Queensland rugby. And, you know, I thought, you know, a real motivation for me is wanting to give back to the game that's, uh, that's again, given me so much, but also try and add value to where I think can in a, in a very exciting period for, for, you know, rugby, not only in Queensland, but I, I guess in Australia. We're entering a really golden period potentially for Australian rugby. We've got World Cups not only for the men in 2027 but for the women in 2029 with grabbing onto that great escalation in uh, the women's game. Mm. Plus uniquely in Queensland there's the 2032 Olympic Games. Uh, how much opportunity is there for Australian rugby in this period but also the, the value of really smart decision making? Yeah, look, I think it's a big, there's a huge opportunity and something that's probably not going to come around, you know, too soon again. So we've got to make sure that the game as a whole maximises the attention that we get, but also being smart with the way that we, we you know, work with our money and invest that growing forward. Because, you know, this is the opportunity and it's the potential to set up rugby as a whole um, for, for, you know, for decades to come. And I think that's what, you know, is, is exciting, but it's also, you know, really important that the right decisions are made at the right time. Some things never change. Queensland, New South Wales, first game of the season, an absolute match where all the tensions and emotions of, mm. of decades just come to the surface. Mm. Uh, you made your debut against New South Wales, your very first game. Yeah. Uh, talk us through some of the feelings that come to the surface against New South Wales. Oh look, it's always the, you know it's the number one game on the calendar. When, when I used to uh, when you used to get the schedule out, you always circle the ones, in particular the ones at home, the, the atmosphere and the crowd and the, the feeling, the tribalism that you know people come to love between Queensland and New South Wales, where it's rugby league, rugby union, AFL. It doesn't matter the sport, the the passion and the rivalry between the two states is is you know what people love about the sport. And for me, it was always a big game, a huge game, and something you want to make sure you know the little brother north of the border wanted to get one up over the the big Sydney siders. So. Yeah, huge opportunity and a great great opportunity for the Reds to start their season this year. We've got another <coughs> fine wallaby in uh, Phil War now leading Rugby Australia. Uh, did you ever see Phil without David Croft's blood on him in a, in a state game? Yeah, I mean, those two were, were, were used to get stuck into it. And I think it was uh, who could punch who first. But look, you know, Phil's... Uh, you know, got a big job ahead of him, and you know he's, he seems to be making the right moves so far. But you know we got to make sure that we get as a as a game as a, and a, and I guess the game as a whole need to make sure we're pushing in the right direction with clear understanding of what our strategy is and how we're going to grow because the the way we're going to grow this is together. Uh, and look, I think it's a big job for Phil moving forward. Uh, one of the really <coughs> pleasing things about Les Kiss coming in as coach, he's uh, made repeated mentions about. Uh, the foundations being strong mm. that he's building on rather than sort of disinheriting what's come before him. Is that a good sign for you in terms of <coughs> even what you're seeing around the Reds? Yeah, look, I think it's been uh, you know, a lot of positivity coming out. There always is in pre-season when you haven't, uh, haven't kicked the ball in anger. But look, I think it's, it's really positive to see that it, you know, there's been some great building blocks here. And I think that's where we felt with, with Queensland Rugby, was, or with the Reds particularly, is that we got to a ceiling point and now this is the opportunity. We've got a good base and Brad and his team have been able to build a really solid foundation that is really easy for coach like Les to build on. And I think he said that is, you know, there's some really good foundations there. It's now taking that detail of the game plan to the next level and, and the players seem to be really buying into it from what I from what I hear and from talking to everyone. But you know, they get an opportunity to come out and play their first trial games and then we've got you know, you know the season starts. So that's when you you know the test really comes on. One thing that's on the radar quicker than people will realise is the British and Irish Lions Tour in 2025. You're in something of a unique position. You were captain of the Wallabies when they last toured here uh, in 2013. Do people understand how big that will be for both Queensland and Australia? Well, I hope so. Look, it's a huge occasion. It's once every 12 years. It's probably once a once a career sort of sort of opportunity. There's not many people. I think maybe James Slipper might get the opportunity to play twice if he's um, still in fighting fit in the condition he is now. But look, I think it's it's such a big environment. Having lived in the UK for two Lions tour, the last two against New Zealand and South Africa, I probably didn't understand until I lived over there through these these Lions series how big. 
and how much it means and what it, you know, the importance of it for the home nations. And you know, I was only living in one in the UK, in, in London, but the ability and the the passion that it rises, you know, the red is everywhere through the pubs, through the cities, through match days. Doesn't matter the time of day where the, when the game is on. It's six a.m. in the morning. Everywhere is full of red, and I think they'll come down to to, to Australia with that support. You know, I think we had thirty thousand fly down last last tour, and I'm expecting yeah. similar numbers this time. So they really bring the support and draw draw the best support of our out of our Australian fans. So I'm looking forward to to that tour. It's such a big occasion for you know on the World Rugby calendar. There's much more interest than just the test matches. In 2013, Queensland produced one of their great performances again against a Lions team and uh, nearly knocked them off. Not like 1971 when they did knock them off, but uh, a brilliant game. And I know you as a Queenslander were disappointed you couldn't play in that game just because it was too close to the test. Uh, looking at the calendar, Queensland will get the chance at full strength to have a crack at the Lions next year. Yeah, and I think it's one of the great unique things about Lions tours is you get the opportunity to you know, test yourself against uh, what is a, an international standard team, and I think that's the exciting part for Lions tours. It's unique. There's not the, the old school tours that we used to see, uh, you know, in the amateur era where you know the provincial sides would play the test teams as they travel around. They have a much longer touring party, so that, I think this is the really the only opportunity where it's done consistently. So there's a huge opportunity for the Reds, and you know, as you said, you know, still talking about 1971, the, the chance to create history, and this Reds team will have that. It's a long way out. Queensland Reds against the British and Irish Lions 2025. Uh, Reds by two. <laughs> Thanks, James. Thank you.